what we're going to talk about today is something that we uh, touched on before, and I want to revisit some of it and then go a little bit more in depth about some of our professional communication um, skills. So uh, I'm going to show you guys some examples of business cards when we break here and, and, and all that. So I want to get going on um, the business card stuff. So some of this is a bit of review and some of it is, is new stuff. So uh, I want to talk about networking. And uh, we'll talk about it in a little more depth in a second, but I want to start off saying we're constantly networking. I think sometimes when you guys hear this, you think it's some new skill that you need to somehow create out of thin air. It's not. Networking is going to pull together a lot of the things you guys are already doing, maybe just in a slightly more formal manner. But um, our networks go back uh, before today, right? before this semester. So you guys have been building your networks for a long time. So in my case, that's when I was a, a diver out on Catalina Island and blew out all the blood vessels in my eyes and became a textbook example of what not to do with this certain kind of way of diving. So that's great. Um, that was just right after it happened, so it got much worse the next couple days and it looked just like a vampire. It was great. Um, that one down there is from a, a scientific meeting when I was younger and had more hair. And then uh, and these network things continue to evolve. So this is my these are some of my particular network paths. Maybe they'll be sim similar to yours, maybe they'll be totally different. But they all, um, if you nurture them, they'll all work on things. So for example, this crazy guy here on the right was the guy that I first went out to Catalina to work with in 1990. And, and so if you work on them, your networks can have a very long uh, lifespan and can um, be uh, quite helpful, not just personally, but also for your career. Same thing. Uh, so, so again, these networks can be persistent. So those are some folks that, uh, those of you that come with me to New Orleans, you guys will meet those guys up on top when we're graduate students together and when we still work together. So these networks um, uh, have uh, potentially um, the ability to, to change your career path as well. Um, we, we, this is a slide from last semester when we talked about this, but just suffice it to say, this is a, a recent uh, panel that um, I was on, and the point is all these folks uh, I'd worked with before, with the exception of Karina, who, who now is the director of the Romberg Tiburon Lab. So all the, again, if you, if you foster and blow on the, the flame of your networks, they can come back to help you for a long period of time. But you don't know when you're starting these networks who's going to be the most helpful colleague or, or what, what node in that, in that social network is going to uh, lead to the most opportunities. So you're going to um, approach them all with equal um, attention and interest. So I want to ask you guys before we go further, so tell me about your guys' networks right now, your professional networks. Well, how would you characterize them? Who, who, who are those people? Patrick. Faculty members. Okay, faculty people, so you're professors. Okay, that's, that's, that's one. I should probably write these down if I had a pen. Uh, okay, yeah, does it work? So we got faculty. What else? Who else? Fellow students. Okay, okay, students. Okay. Who else? Who was... NPS and USGS working at the island. Okay, so so um, professional or, or maybe we can say agency folks, agency folks, and people on the island. So people that aren't necessarily here. So some uh, people that are, might be distant to us. Okay, who else? Who else in, in your like your own personal network? Not like who you want to have, but who do you talk to? So employer or well, volunteer. okay okay so um, so mentor maybe we call it a mentor or something like that okay mentor employer would count too good who else my research partners my capstone okay so collaborators okay good who else. Okay, okay, so, so um, family, uh, family and, uh, yeah, yeah, per yeah, personal life stuff, uh-huh. Yeah, who else? A friend who graduated. Okay, good, so, so, so students, so maybe folks of different ages, 
All right, so not all everybody are same age or not everybody necessarily older than us, maybe people younger than us maybe or something. What else? Who or who else? So I, informal networks of people. So okay. So uh, people we bump into. Okay. Good. Okay, so that's a good start. So all of a sudden we start to have a lot of people, right? It's not just. I mean, totally, you guys should use me and your other faculty, but and your fellow students. But right, it's it it can go really easily and very quickly beyond that. So I just asked you guys, I should have had that first. Okay, so taking the, the huge overview, here's a question. So would you guys agree or disagree, say this is true or false, agree, disagree with this statement? No, I agree. Agree? <laughs> so so, so, so who's, who's, who says they agree that that's what it is? Well, I guess. You, you have to say true or false. For the purposes of my example, <laughs> you must, you can't do the half, sort of. Yes or no, so who says yes? One, two, okay, so that's like maybe about 75, 80% or something like that. Okay, cool. So um, I would say that, that I think most people, as you guys just evidenced, would say that's true. Yeah, networking is going and, and, and you know, meeting folks. Um, and so we most commonly see this at your guys' point in your career right now where you're getting ready to graduate, getting ready to go on, getting ready to get a job, looking for jobs, hunting for jobs, that kind of stuff. So that makes sense. Um, but just simply meeting other people isn't necessarily, well, it, uh, that's part of it. That's definitely part of it. But it's much more complex than that, right? So, so meeting people is but the first step, even though sometimes people think that's the main, um, the main thing. So let's, let's talk about a little example here really quickly, a couple examples. So here's, here are you guys. <laughs> I don't know why I made a smiley face person because... You guys are all getting into your analysis phase, and so I probably should have made a, a frowny person since you guys are, are going to be supposedly all, all anxious and stuff in the next few weeks. But anyway, so there you go. So there, there you guys are. And we could talk about, um, I think this is how we typically think of uh, our networks, right? So there's, there's, we're at the center, and then we have a bunch of uh, folks that we, we talk to or reach out to. And maybe, what, maybe the red person is a faculty person. You know, I don't know, maybe the blue one is is your boss, maybe the pink one is one of your fellow students, you know, what have you, right? So that's cool, and, and that sort of makes intellectual sense. But more typically, we, uh, we see these types of social networks, where, um, yes, there's, you know, in the case of you, you're always at the center of your own network, and we definitely have some, you know, direct contact with folks, but also, and this is the important thing, that historically has been hard to really see, but now with all our social media uh, and, and networking uh, online opportunities, it's really easy to see the value of, of more sophisticated networks. And so, so in the case, in the small case here is, uh, sometimes you're the only person in your network that knows, you know, lady A, right, the red one. But in other cases, um, this person, say like the, the brown one here on the lower left, uh, is uh, known both to you and to some of your colleagues, right? And then in other cases, you know maybe the dark blue guy and you don't know any of the, any of the light blue people, but through that person, that's a, a mechanism to get to that other group of folks. And there's, and there's whole fields, there's whole academic disciplines where people just study this now. And it, it has been historically quite hard to study and it's, it's been traditionally quite theoretical massive flourishing in the last 10, 15 years. Again, through uh, computer networks and social media sites where people can actually quantify stuff that, in fact, whole businesses, Facebook is built on, the entire business model of Facebook is built on how you relate to people that you know and things that you see, right? And same with Google and all that jazz. So uh, without going into too much depth, suffice it to say, um, there are different um, types of networks. There are simplistic networks, and there are more sophisticated networks. And we would like to get you guys into as, as sophisticated a network as possible. It's a, it's a long-term goal. We want to push you guys into working towards diversifying 
and making your networks more complex and therefore casting a potentially wider net for your professional purposes. So here's some examples. Uh, did I show you guys this in the fall? Okay, okay, so the, yeah, so I thought I did. So we'll just run through this really quick. Nothing new here. I used to update this once a year, but now, as I said before, they deleted all this stuff. Uh, or or um, I should say LinkedIn made it so that you can't easily get this data anymore. And so this ends as of like two years, ago, a year or two ago, because I can't update it. But, the, but you guys will see the point. So the point here, if you recall, is that, so I'm at the center because, you know, I'm at the center. Um, and, then, and then what you're seeing here are different net, so these are um, relationships between me, and in this case, this is LinkedIn, me and other people on LinkedIn. And the color uh, refers to people that are grouped similarly, or from the same discipline, or work on the same subject, or in the same geographic area, something like that, right? So there's a similarity. And so this is when my network was fairly small, only a few hundred folks. And so uh, I guess the size of the dot represents how connected that person is, how many connections that, that particular node has to other nodes in the network. And then the lines are obviously just showing you uh, who's, who's connected to who. Obviously, by definition, in this case, everybody has to be connected to me. I'm only looking at my, my primary network. I'm not looking at folks that are related to the people that I know. Um, and, but, but then as you can tell here, in some cases, some of these folks are related to other folks. So some of my network know each other, right? And that's what, that's what we're seeing. That's what the visual, visualization is here. This is when I had 386 connections. Here's 400, uh, 638. And you'll, you'll see that the colors are starting to change, right? There's becoming additional colors. As the network grows, the different uh, sort of natural clusterings are beginning to become more numerous. And continuing to grow, 774, 957, da-da-da-da, 1,000 whatever, 2000, uh, and then I think this is the, the most, this is the oldest one. So um, what, what do you guys notice about this? Or, or, or what, do you notice a pattern? Anything seems striking with the, the colors here? Uh, the red is, is so far uh, detached from the rest of your connections. This one, this one, the, the, the sort of dark orange, reddish color, right. Everybody agree with that? And so what's, what's the orange? Wait, there's a, wait, okay. yeah. CSUCI. So what that says is, it, for, for the stuff that, for my professional network, which is, kind of, which is the stuff I'm interested in, but also in this case, I use LinkedIn primarily as a vehicle to help you guys and, and to be reaching out to people so I can better help you. So I don't, I don't really you know, plan on getting any jobs through LinkedIn. But the hope is that th through knowing people through there, when I learn about stuff, I can better float jobs and opportunities and things for you guys. So, so it's, it's maybe a little bit of a, a different network. But what you see is um, the orange is quite different. The orange are all the people at CSUCI. And very, very disconnected from the rest of my group. So in this case, the rest of my group is uh, coastal people that work on coastal marine uh, efforts outside of California is the dark green. Um, people that work in terrestrial uh, uh, things in this purplish color. Um, there's this, this orange here is California government. So people that work for, say, fish and game or something like that. Um, these are fisheries folk that work, work specifically on marine fisheries management or fishermen or, or the industry, something like that. And then uh, this is uh, my colleagues in the Middle East. Uh, so, so what you see is it really matters who you know, right? So just like we said before, you know, hey, we can use our professors, which is cool, and we can use our, our, our buds in class, which is cool. But in this case, at least for the people that do maybe some of the things that at least some of you might want to work on or, or work for organizations that some of you might want to work for, most of our CI people aren't necessarily really well connected. And I would say that I generally don't add CSUCI uh, people on my network because, again, I'm, I'm, I use this primarily as a tool to help you guys. And so I, I kind of already know them. Right? I, don't, I don't need to have them on the social network. So, um, but the people that I do know are people on our campus that do stuff that you'd be interested in. And so what that says is they're not connected to my network. So maybe they have a separate network that's just like mine that, 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 that I'm not connected to. 
So another reason why you want to have as, as diverse a network as possible so you can find the, the person or the nodes that are going to better connect you to the next level beyond them, right? So that's the goal. So that's the goal. This is, okay. Have you guys heard of pointillism? I guess you guys aren't really engaged with the, the creative arts side of our <laughs> interdisciplinary scholarship. John. It's, it's, it's this, it's, so it grew out of Impressionism. Yeah, so it grew out of Impressionism. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, there you go. How, how did you, I, I love the fact that you knew that. That's awesome, that's awesome. So, but the idea here is instead of taking a brush stroke and brushing something, right, instead of drawing a guy's chin or, or the, the drape of the cloak on, on, or the coattails of this guy, everything is just made with a bunch of little teeny tiny dollops, right? So it's a point of paint, a point of color, a point of, of um, a pen or, or ink or what have you. And so just doing it maybe doesn't make sense. So if we zoomed into this guy's chest or this guy's face, it would look probably totally abstract, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily make sense. But when we pull back, you can actually see it start to take shape. And so that's what, this is what I think, net, this is how you guys should think of networking, like this. You're not going to start creating your professional network. You're not going to create a masterpiece, you know, I'm not going to go meet the President of the United States and then the head of NOAA, and then the, you know, it's not, not going to work that way, right? So instead, you're going to grab a bunch of stuff, and over time, that the, the, those groups of individual points are going to form a cohesive whole and start to paint a picture of, of your professional network. And so that's, that's what I'm suggesting. Now, when we talk about networking, people have different words for this, right? So some people call it uh, kissing but, or another word. Um, sometimes people talk about a, a good old boy network, something like that. You might have heard those phrases, right? Where you're kind of innervating yourself into this network of people and those people know people or those people you know, are, are connected to other networks or resources and then they can help get you jobs, stuff like that. You might have heard, heard called schmoozing, simply connecting, or you know, six degrees of, uh, or seven degrees or whoever's writing the paper of you know, Kevin Bacon kind of thing. It's all the same thing. So traditionally, some of this has a really um, negative connotation because oftentimes, uh, for example, if it's uh, a, folks from a certain background that only hang out with folks from their background, we tend to view that as a negative thing, right? Because if I don't look like that person or talk like that person, then I'm going to be disadvantaged, right? But the reality is this, this networking goes on with everybody in virtually every uh, human endeavor, and it's a key it's a key thing you guys need to be able to do. Okay, realize, so I know everybody right now is out hunting for a job, and, and that's totally cool, that's natural, you guys should be focused on that. Um, but realize your networks really are more sophisticated than just that. So the first part, clearly, is um, people that you are gonna need, I don't know what the hell's going on with this animation, people that you're gonna need, but also how you can help the other people. If it's all about you getting a job and you wanting something from this person, you're gonna have a crappy network, right? The idea is you want to find someone who's valuable, and one of the ways you can find that someone is valuable is, and, and have a lasting connection is for you to add value to the relationship. It should be a two-way street. Now you guys are young, you're just starting out, maybe you're not a pollution expert and you wanna go get a job from the pollution expert person, right? So that totally makes sense. But over time, you should be uh, ideally contributing something to the relationship. Um, this network is over the long term, right? <coughs> 10, 20, 30, 40 years. So it's both, right now you guys are all focused on the immediate job, how do I get a job, but also we're thinking of the job five years down the road or the new opportunity six years down the road or something like that. Um, think of your network as a resource. It's not just like a, a, a place where you can get ideas for jobs, but actually it's a true resource. So a network you can go to you're doing some GIS project, right? You don't know who to go, you don't, you don't know the right way to do it or don't know how to accomplish this task. Check out your network. Hey, you guys, anybody know how to do X, right? 
And by building that dialogue going back and forth, one, it's going to be going both ways, but two, it's also signaling that, hey, I work on, I know how to make a killer arc map map, right? And so if you think you might need some help in that area, pff, you know, you should think of me. I'm one of, the, I'm one of your connections that knows about this. Uh, over time, this will lead to the growth of your network, right? As you're going to add more contacts, more contacts, more contacts. And over time, you're going to diversify. So right now, you might be really interested in a, in a uh, I don't know, a, a job on emission controls or something like that, right? And so maybe your initial group of contacts are going to be focused on emission controls. But over time, it's going to expand, and it's going to include that and that and that, just like my colored network added lobes and added different colors as we go through time. So here's some targets. Okay, so um, here's some targets for you guys. So the first few are ones that um, I think are maybe not as obvious, and then we'll talk about things that are a little bit more obvious. So the first are competitors, which might be you know, like, what? Why would I want a competitor in my network? Um, keeping abreast of the information that's going on, keep, keeping uh, aware of new developments, right? Helpful. You want to have both people that think like you or in your industry or, in, or have your perspective and folks that don't think like you, right? You want to have a diverse network. You don't just want to be preaching to the choir, right? You don't want to be uh, a Republican that only watches Fox News, right? For many reasons. You want to be one, <laughs> right? You want, to, you want to be someone that listens to people that think like you, but also Folks that offer contrarian opinions. Because maybe most of the time you might kind of dismiss them, but if you're really open and honest, those folks have great ideas too. And it's probably even more important that you listen to those voices that have different perspectives for you. That's, going to, that's what's going to help you grow over time. That's where you're going to hear about job opportunities you would not even considered. Because your you're 20, like, 20 friends haven't heard of that, right? So again, the more diverse the network, the better able you will uh, be to, uh, to change and adapt and grow over time. That goes for, uh, so I just was having lunch with one of our recent graduates and, and he wants to move to Oregon. And he's been working for one of our resource management agencies here in the Santa Monica Mountains, wants to go work in Oregon. And so one of his questions was, hey, do, uh, you know, Dr. A, who do you, who do you know in Oregon? I was like, well, not a lot of people. I know a couple people. You can talk to this guy and this guy, but don't know a huge amount of people. And I said, who do you know in Oregon? And the answer was, nobody. <laughs> nobody, right? So then I said, why the expletive deleted? Do you want to go to Oregon then? And the answer was, because I got water. And then the conversation went elsewhere. But, but the point is, <laughs> the point is, uh, what's that? Is that Rydog? Rydog? No, it was not Riley Pratt. Uh, it was someone that Riley Pratt works for. So, um, so in, in any event, uh, the point is uh, build these networks up because maybe you want to go to Oregon, right? Maybe you want to go to Tijuana or Luxembourg or whatever it is, right? So by building up these networks at the get-go, you'll have feelers out there. So if you, or, or so may, maybe this guy's going to get an offer from uh, some, I don't know, nonprofit or something in Oregon. He's going to say, is this like a sketch group or a good group. And by having at least a couple folks in Oregon you could potentially reach out to, uh, you could sort of suss out whether that opportunity was, was potentially something of use to you or valuable or not. Okay, then we have the more obvious ones that a lot of these guys you named. So that would be professional associations, either formal memberships in groups like the Ecological Society of America, uh, uh, George Wright Society, that kind of stuff, or possibly just professional networking groups on, say, LinkedIn or Facebook or something like that, right? So, so those are obvious, obvious places to go to. Next is uh, folks that, um, again, we showed, I showed that network, right, where I didn't actually know the light blue people, but the blue person did. So a great way to meet folks is to talk to the person, especially if you know them fairly well, and say, hey, you know, I don't know blah, blah, blah from, I don't know, uh, what For, from from the chevron refinery but you do would you would you mind introducing me right and you know you know there's a little you know quick couple line email and 
mostly people, yeah, sure, I'll do it. You know, bang off a little, hey, blah, 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 just so you know, here's blah, blah, blah. Uh, they work on X and I thought you guys might want to, you guys have some similar interests, so maybe you guys should say hi, click, right? Great way to introduce folks through uh, an intermediary, another one of those nodes. Uh, so I mentioned competitors. Obviously, the, the more natural fit would people would be folks that you work with or or could bring value to your endeavor. So I'm not a ranger, but maybe the park rangers really help me in my research. So you know, reach out to those folks and and on. Uh, advocacy groups. So uh, environmental advocacy groups. Um, you know, uh, coastal access groups. Those kind of folks. Uh, could be uh, very useful uh, people in your networks. And then, of course, obviously, uh, government agencies uh, and the like. Elected officials um, can be very helpful. Those folks tend to be really highly connected um, individuals because, in their case, they're using that as connections to get elected, uh, but, but can also be really helpful in terms of pointing you to resources or pointing you to opportunities, again, you might uh, be ignorant of. And then, as I think Dorothy was mentioning, maybe just your, your buds, your friends, right? Your, your, your quote unquote non professional network, your, your friend's wife, or, or the guy you play volleyball. We just had a guy in our lab, uh, when was that? I don't know, five days ago or so, who um, is an, a forensics expert and is helping us with sand identification, uh, um, sorry, microplastic identification. But how do we know him? Because Dr. Steele plays volleyball with him, right? <laughs> And it just like, oh, by the way, what? This guy knows something about sand? That's like weird. I guess it's not weird because volleyball is on sand, but still, you guys get the point. <laughs> it sounded better in my head when I thought about that example. Okay, so a couple of tips for you guys for networking. Um, always positive, right? I don't care how bad a day and how many tickets you just got because you didn't park in the lot or whatever. Always positive when you're interacting with folks. Um, now, you don't want to maybe have a plastic smile on, but always at least um, a slight smile. You don't want to have a dour frown. And some of us just naturally smile all the time. Others are kind of moo. So if you're one of those moo, you want to go practice in front of the mirror. Yeah, Dorothy. It's uh, the anti-RBF. <laughs> Resting bitch face. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, as a professional, I won't use that term. But yes, I would say yes, you want to have, you want to have a... a uh, at least a slight curve to your lips upward, not downward. Uh, again, uh, but we want to be sincere, right? People really can tell if you guys are being a schmuck, if you're being a plastic person that should, hey, I love what you've done with garbage manipulation, and your talk was the best talk I ever saw on garbage manipulation, right? Clearly, you guys, you guys are getting old now. You guys all understand that that's a baloney, but... but um, Meeting people should be about meeting people. It shouldn't necessarily be about getting a job. Maybe you really want to get a job, but that first out the gate, not necessarily what you, in some cases maybe, but generally you don't want to have that be the first salvo. Give me something, right? Just like I said before, it should be a two-way street. So the first thing is you guys are going to drop, you know, drop your 30-second elevator pitch about what you do and, and your, your interest. John. That's all good. For uh, the environmental conflict resolution class I'm in right now, we're having to conduct interviews. Uh, and in my case, we went, I went to a few different city officials from the uh, Chamber of Commerce and the city council. Cool. And just from talking to them about the issue that we're researching, I've gotten tons of lead generation for the area that I want to get to into after good. graduate. And I wasn't even like, hey, I'm looking for a job. I just told them. Exactly. Okay, Exactly. Yeah, so that's a perfect case of point. So, so building a network in and of itself should be your goal. An ancillary benefit will be you'll hear about opportunities, you'll hear about jobs, but if you go into it as, give me a fucking job, right? <laughs> People see that a mile away, right? If instead you go and say, hey, I'm interested in topic X, and you have a conversation with him or her about X, then they will be the one, just like John was saying, they'll be the one, hey, well, you know, there's, have you, do you know about Company X, or did you know da da da's going on? There's this cool new conference in LA next week. Are you going to that? No, I'm not. Really? Hey, what's the con? And all of a sudden, boom, you're there, right? So a, a good, good case in point. Uh, I would absolutely, if you're an old fat dude like me that has a job, I don't have to plan. You guys have to plan, 
okay? So what that means is when we're going to go into it. Now, if we just bump into someone in the hall, right, maybe we hadn't thought of a plan. But when we go to meetings, when we go to say hi to folks or these kind of opportunities, take at least a couple minutes, at least beforehand, sit in your car, breathe for a couple minutes and figure out what's your plan, right? If not, if not longer term attention to this uh, before you get in your car, right? So have a plan, have a clear objective. I want to meet five new people at this meeting. I want to get five cards from people that are in the whatever, wastewater industry. And stick to that plan. Uh, as John was saying, uh, most of this is listening. Most of this is not right? You definitely want to talk and you definitely want to be able to articulate who you are and, and what you're doing and interested. But in the initial thing, right? You want to listen a lot. And by listen, I don't mean not talk and then be thinking in your head what I'm going to say next when this person breathes, but actually <laughs> hearing what she's saying, hearing what he's saying, and being able to respond to it, right? Uh, very important to thank people. Many, many, many people do not uh, have basic, uh, we might, we used to be considered, you know, basic social skills and basic uh, uh, manners and things like that, it stands out. I'm not, I am not kidding. It really, really stands out. And you guys want to be the one that they remember because you were professional and you were very courteous, right? Um, maybe if you're going to go be in the octagon and, you know, some kind of extreme fighter thing, maybe then you should be a tool. But for most of you guys, you don't want to do that, right? And it can only benefit you to be very respectful. Um, unless you're running for, I guess, uh, the president, but that's another, that's another story. Uh, so, uh, again, offer something when you can. So, I totally get it. You guys are crafting your elevator speeches. You're working on it. That's cool. Right? A lot of you guys took the tact of blah, 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 blah. I'm working on this. So, do you want to look at my stuff? Right? And that, that's a fine place to start. But it's much better to go, hey, love a chance to talk with you about your stuff. Right? And see if you know, see if we can have an exchange of ideas as opposed to, can you do this for me? Can you look at this for me? Can you do that task for me, right? Be much more of a, of a, a colleague, right? A colleague. And then with all this networking stuff, some of us are more natural networkers than our others, but just with, just with everything else, with writing, with all this analysis, with the, it's just practice, right? So practice, 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 practice. The more opportunities you guys can go talk to groups that aren't us, conferences, whatever, the better you're going to get. And I guarantee it'll happen. All right. One of the most uh, uh, best places to meet folks is uh, our, our professional meetings. So a couple suggestions for meetings. This applies to Sage. This applies to anything you guys want to go to. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, right. So this is what I'm telling you guys, again, as the young people. So me as the old professor dude, don't follow necessarily what I do. But what you should do, what you guys should do is always um, be early. Not on time, early. So if the thing starts at 9, you should plan to be there at 8. And then go get a coffee and go hit the bathroom and do whatever you need to do, right? At this point in your career, you need to be on it every single time. You don't want to be had a flat tire, had to show up half hour late, right? You want to be there, boom. Primarily because in many cases, the freshest people are, uh, the, the best networking things are, are early on in the meeting, right? They're not worn down by talking to people all the time. Their voice isn't getting hoarse. They're not getting thirsty and thinking about where they're gonna go for dinner. It's, it's like, it's fresh. So you want, I want, to, I want you guys to be the people in there having the fresh interactions. I don't want you guys to be the ones that come in an hour and a half late. I mean, you'll meet people for the whole duration of the meeting, but your best ones will probably be earlier rather than later on average. Always dress professional. Did I tell you guys the story about dress in that time in Arizona last time? Okay, so I'll tell you, my, I'll tell you guys my, my dress. So um, we, all, we all are from tribes, right? We like to pretend that we're not, we like to pretend we're all creative, and I have my individual style. It's BS, right? It's total BS. <laughs> so we all are with our different groups, our surfer groups, our whatever groups, and, and we dress the way our, our fellow folks do. So this mo became most clear to me years ago, right when I started my postdoc, 
So I'd moved up to Stanford and I went to a meeting called the Ecological Society of America meeting, which is a big, huge meeting for, for ecologists, like 5,000 or so people a year, right? Huge meeting. And so uh, I was there with my technician and I just hired her from a master's degree at um, Santa Cruz and she had a lot of friends from Santa Cruz. And, uh, and, and so, okay, so great. So, so I gave a talk and then she said, hey, Sean, why don't you come out with my fr friends? I want you to come out and introduce, I want to introduce you to all these guys and we'll go out to dinner. So, okay, great. So I said, well, we're going to meet at blah, blah, blah at five o'clock and then we'll go find a place. Great. Okay, so I go down. So I'm wearing, um, uh, maybe I, you know, maybe I look like the man. Maybe I was a little tool-like. I had khakis on and a, and a white collared shirt. No tie, right? So, um, so I go to meet these folks. Everybody is in uh, uh, Birkenstocks, Birkenstocks <laughs> Guatemala pants, uh, you know, some sort of MC Hammer pants, and, you know, some like ripped up t-shirts and this and that, a lot of beard action going on. And so it's all good, right? So, hey, what's up? And we're talking. And my, one of the things I always forget to do is I always leave my name tag on. I forget. Usually when you walk out of your meeting, everybody immediately takes it off. I'm always like, rah, 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 talking to people. And then, like, rah. and then the waitress is like, hey, Sean. I'm like, oh, my God, how do I know her? And then, right? <laughs> so, so we're walking around, and, and we're going, and I'm trying to say hi to some of these folks. And some were very nice people, but some others were very, uh, uh, not, I wouldn't say confrontational, they, they, but they weren't going out of the way to say hi to me, right? Which, you know, and I, I would like to delude myself into thinking I'm a fairly gregarious person. I probably, you guys are probably intimidated by me, or at least some of you are probably intimidated by me, but, 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 but I think I'm a pretty chill guy, pretty easy to talk to, at least I like to think that. Um, and so uh, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure out why a lot of these, and there's a big group, right? There's like 30 people. This isn't four or five people, this is a lot of people. So I couldn't figure it out. So finally, at one point, we're, and we're walking around Tucson in the summertime. Super cool area, right? So everybody's sweating, and I'm like, God, man. I'm like, oh. So we're walking around, and nobody knows where they were going. So they want, they're looking for this vegan Thai place with, you know, this crazy chai that washes out your colon or something, right? And so I'm like, okay. So we're looking around, and nobody knows where this place is, and this is before smartphones. These guys are like, oh, no, I think it's like three blocks over and then to the right, and it's past like the dump and blah, blah, blah. So, okay, so we're walking around, and so it's, it's hot, right? And so we're really getting hot. And um, so we come up to, uh, and then there's, there's a, a crossing light. So we come to one of, the, one of the corners, and we're stuck there for, it's a re relatively large intersection, so we're sitting there for a few minutes. And, um, and this one group of people that I had been talking with, they were on another side of the road, they, they crossed over, and so these other people, that, and nobody's saying hi to me. So I finally walked up to these guys and said, hey, how's it going, man? I'm Sean, introduced myself, shook their hand, and went around and, and said hi to everybody. And this one guy, I remember, uh, he looks at me and he shakes my hand really kind of, you know, leaning back, you know, like, like this, you know, head back and he's shaking my hand and goes, huh, yeah, where are you from? And he looks over and I have my name tag on, so he goes, oh, Stanford? Now that explains why you look like such a tool. And he turns around and he walks away. And I was thinking, w what? Like, I actually thought a bad word and I said a bad word, but, but, um, but you know, it was like, what are you talking about? And so it became very clear. So then I started painting this whole meeting. I started like, what? Why? Why? I'm not like a, a jerk, right? Why am I this guy? Why is this guy call me a jerk? And I started really paying attention to what everybody was wearing. And so what everybody was wearing were, uh, you know, fleece vests. Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and it was very funny because everybody said that they you just wear whatever, right? And we're totally chill. The reality was they had a uniform, right? And their uniform was sort of eco hippie dudes, right? <laughs> and that's all good, man. I mean, that's, that's, that's cool. I like that look. It's all good. But, but it was very clear in their mind that if um, you didn't dress a certain way, you, that implied something about your behavior. I totally disagree with that opinion. I think you guys, for as much, so do you ever see me wear a tie? I never wear a tie. I hate wearing ties. One of the reasons I became a professor is because I loathe wearing ties. So if I have to go to a wedding or something, or if I'm given like a final, I'll wear a tie for you guys to suffer along with you. That's the only reason I wear it. But, but the point is, I don't, I don't consider myself a big person caught up in how people look or whatever. But what's important for the fields that most of you guys are going into is you're attempting to influence things, right? You're attempting to make the water quality better. You're attempting to improve the planning. You're attempting to improve emission standards, whatever it is, okay? And so 
all the eco hippie folks are already on your side, right? You don't need to impress those folks. What you need to impress is you need to be professional and be taken seriously by folks that aren't necessarily in your social or professional circles. So the answer there is to always dress professionally. If you're ever unsure, if you're ever unsure, go, you know, I wouldn't go black tie, but I would go, you know, a bit more dressed up than you think you might need to be. It, it, unless you're hanging out with these guys from you know, UC Santa Cruz, uh, <laughs> it, it really won't hurt you, right? And so always dress professionally. Um, you guys should be the host, especially in no host situations, right? Can I get you a drink? Can I get you, I'm gonna go to the snack thing, get a couple hors d'oeuvres, can I bring you back a couple hors d'oeuvres? Be that person, right? Be that person. Don't be the, the person that um, is sort of seems to be cheap or seems to be sort of, you know, standoffish. Again, that's about bringing value to folks. And not that I want you to spend all your cash on getting somebody drunk because you want to get a job from them. <laughs> but, you know, truly, but truly, right, you want to be the one that's being professional. You want to be taking the higher. Let me, let me get you, let me get you, you want a soda or something? Can I get you water, right? That's, what you, that's the person you want to be. Um, you don't want to get sucked into the whirlpool of the dork, right? Which is, this often happens. So usually I try to take the hit for you guys if we're at a meeting and I see that happening. I try to, you know, be your wingman in that sense. But um, you should, like I said before, you should have a plan. Maybe my plan is to meet five people this meeting. Get five business cards, right? And generally that shouldn't be a problem. Every once in a while you're going to hit someone that just uh, is a puppy. And they found you and you actually talk to them. Oh my God, nobody talks to me. And then they'll whump. And they can be a total kill for your networking stuff, right? And so I'm not saying to be a jerk and be a, uh, an a-hole or something like that. But what I'm saying is you need to stick to your plan. Don't get stuck in the whirlpool of one person, unless this is the most important person ever. And maybe this person's great for you. But usually those aren't the ones that want to spend three hours with you, right? It's usually the guy that is living with mom and got a ride to the meeting. And wow, you really seem adult, you know, that kind of person. So um, you want to plan for how you're going to meet people and also plan on how you're going to move, right? How you're going to move around the room or the setting or the conference to make sure that you maximize your opportunity to meet new folks. And I know that sounds silly, but you really should think about that, right? At least for a few minutes in your car before you're walking. What if I get someone that's just whatever, right? Um, good. Uh, when you are talking with a person, unless it's the person that's been sitting there for two hours talking to you that you can't get rid of, you want your undivided attention, right? Don't be looking, don't be looking at your text. Don't be looking down at your phone. Don't be looking over to see where your buds are. If you're going to do that, you say, hey, love talking to you. Hey, just so you know, my friends are going to come over here. We're, we're, we're heading out to dinner in five minutes. Um, can you come in? We'd love for you to come to dinner with us. Oh, you can't come to dinner? Cool. Great. But that, that way that person knows what's going on, doesn't think you're just totally distracted and, and doesn't, don't care about talking to the person. You want undivided attention. Dorothy. Okay, what about when you're standing there with for your poster and people are bobbing past and two or three people ask you questions and you're talking and then you see the person that you should be talking to. Ah. Uh, they come up and they start reading your poster. You don't want to be rude because you're talking to these three communications ladies. <laughs> They're just interested. Right. This is the person you want to talk to. Right. So a great, great question. So one, so the question is, you're at your poster or you're at your event, whatever it is, and you see the person that you know you want to engage with, but other folks are engaged. And you don't want to be a jerk to these people, right? So one thing that I think is really helpful is if you're a your poster, that's the easiest thing in the world. It's really easy there. It's a bit harder when you're standing in the middle of the room and somebody's walking by and like, you know, you want to look like a stalker, like, hey, come here, you know? <laughs> um, although I have done that in the past. Uh, and that has worked, but, um, <laughs> but generally you want to, t it doesn't always work. So the best thing when you're in front of your poster, when the person's reading it, hey, let me know if you have any questions. I've been talking with these guys, just answering another couple questions for theirs, but love, for to talk, love to tell you about my poster if you have a chance, but, um, you know, but go ahead and, and take a look at it and, uh, and or join our conversation. That, that's the other way, to pull the people into, the, pull that lady or that guy into the conversation, but signal to them that you see them, 
Yeah, totally. Let me know if you have any questions. Love to explain this to you um, once you've taken a quick look at it or if you want me to walk you through the, the other. So this is a line. I probably shouldn't give you guys this line. This is, this, is, this, is my, this is my approach that I do with everybody, whether I've just been at the meeting for 30 seconds or five hours. What I say is, oh, man, conference overload or something to that effect. Oh, man, my head's totally killing me. Do me a favor. Tell me what your poster says in 30 seconds. Right? And so, so I put it on me. I blame me for not for being burnt out or whatever. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't say your poster is such crap I can't even figure out what you did. Right? <laughs> what I say is, hey, you, you walk me through your stuff. Right? And, and, and so that signals short. And so that means if it's not interesting or they're, or they're just not articulating, it's like, okay, great. I got to keep going. It gives me an out. Ra or if they're really engaging, it's great. Oh, we can stay there and talk for an hour. So, that, so those little tricks really do help. And, and they're a way of engaging with folks that, that is not rude. It's not like, hey, tell me what about this. Uh-huh. Okay. And then walk away. Right? That, you, you don't want to be that person. And I know it sounds funny, but there are yeah. a lot of people that do that. And I don't want that to be you guys. Uh, another key one is to stand by the food slash uh, drinks. Uh, as as uh, Tevin and Dorothy might have discovered last week at a, at a poster they were giving, uh, everybody comes by the food, right? Don't necessarily want to stand by the bathroom because <laughs> while everybody also goes through the bathroom, they don't want to hang out in front of the bathroom, right? So, so the, food, the food, though, is the attraction. That's where you want to... So if you're not at a poster or, or you're, just, you're not sure where to go, go just hang out by the food, right? Stand a, a person or two back and... And while you're, you know, while you're looking at stuff, and then you can start engaging someone. Yeah, Tevin. Is it appropriate to make up an excuse why you should be next to the food? Like, I have low blood sugar? Sure. <laughs> sure, why not? Why not? I need it. Okay, so that's, so, that's, so that's our meeting, right? That's our meeting and all that kind of stuff. Okay, what about after the meeting or after the event or whatever it is? You want to, you are not done with the meeting until you've made all of your notes. So I don't care how tired you are, you must record, you must capture either by typing into your computer, writing it down with pen and ink, you know, whatever, somehow capture what happened. You want to say who I talked to, right? I talked to, you know, this person, they were at this industry, they were asking me about X, right? Uh, for anybody that's even vaguely interesting, you want to follow up. Uh, if, if, the, if, you, if you just had this, the best conversation in the world, maybe right then. But, you know, you don't want to look like a super stalker. So maybe next morning. Maybe type up that email, but don't send, hit send. Right? And the next day, pop it off. Boom. Hey, great talking with you yesterday. Really love to keep in touch with you. Da, 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 da. And, you know, and, and, and start that going. If it is something that, say, you're engaged with your scholarship and you're really interested in, hey, you know, maybe we can maybe we could uh, hook up next month or something to talk about talk about my my findings or your findings or whatever. Again, uh, uh, if you committed to do anything, sending the person your poster in electronic form, whatever, do that. Do that immediately, and then have the longer term goal of whatever. I want to you know I didn't say that I was going to send that to that person, but you know, I think I want to meet with that person within, you know, the next two months, you know, so set those specific goals up and put those down in your calendar. Make sure those things are, are targeted. Uh, this sounds lame, but this is fantastically important, particularly when you guys get to job interviews. Um, but, but anytime, anytime. Uh, uh, if someone helps you out, I wouldn't send a personalized handwritten thank you note to somebody who just met at a poster session. But if they helped me out at the poster session, if they gave me a great resource, if they, some of that, I would, you know, I would definitely consider it. And definitely, if someone gave you some career advice, definitely, if you did a job interview, you want to send a handwritten thank you note to that person. That nobody does this anymore. And firstly, nobody sends thank you notes. Secondly, almost no one does handwritten thank you notes, um, unless your handwriting is Fine. like Tevin's. Uh, you want to print it, right? You want to print it. You want it to look handwritten. You don't want it to look random. You want it to be handwritten, right? You don't want to look like somebody just banged out and bought it at the Hallmark store or, the, or found it on some online, you know, Instagram share button thing. You actually put a little bit of thought into it. 
that makes a massive impression. And it only is making a larger and larger impression through time. 10 years ago, it kind of made an impression. Five years ago, made an impression. Now, it makes a huge impression. It makes a huge impression. Because your generation um, has a lot of great stuff going for it, but the personalized thank you notes are not one of them. And so, therefore, it's another way for you to stand out. Um, and then also, after the meeting, how did you do? Oh man, I was totally nervous. I totally flubbed. I had a bunch of crackers in my mouth when that lady came up and talked to me. Whatever it is, right? Uh, you know, critique yourself because you want to get better every single time. So um, make sure you're learning from what didn't go ideally. Uh, reward yourself if you did a great job. Go get a go get a cool ice cream or however you guys like to reward yourself. Go out for an extra surf or something, right? Um, and that's important, right? When you do, so not only do you critique yourself when you do something really good did a really good job of that, you should make sure that you make yourself aware that you did. Um, and then you're going to plan the next thing. So, okay, I went, great. What's the next conference I'm going to go to? What's the next opportunity I'm going to go that's going to help build my network? Okay, getting onto the tools that you guys can use. First and foremost is your business. Yeah. Okay, I have a question yeah. Business. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> what if you're, like, you meet someone and you're kind of talking with them, mm -hmm. and then it kind of lingers on, Waiting for other people to go, and then wait, wait, okay, sorry, sorry. So you mean so so you're in a group of people, or and um, you mean you, you want this person to be alone, or no, no, okay, you you broke off with them alone. Okay, so you and somebody else got all the juicy stuff that we uh -huh. need out of them, and then you're ready to move on, mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like. Uh, Oh, okay, great. I got you. Okay, so Patrick's saying, all right, so I, I made this great contact, really useful. I got, I got a lot of help and, and suggestions and what have you. Uh, but I've, uh, Patrick the vampire has sucked all the blood out of that victim, and he wants to migrate on to the next victim and, and, and feed his eternal soul. Uh, so, yeah, so great question. So um, what I would say is that should be part of your plan. You guys should plan to... Be, not, and stuck is a bit, a bit of a crass term, but right, the goal is for you guys to build your network, right? That's the goal, and so, um, and so, if this person is sort of um, was great and helpful and everything, uh, it, it's totally fine to say, awesome. Um, hey, I got there's a couple posters I got to see. Hey, I, I got it. There's this other person I want to check real quick, but I definitely want to keep this conversation going. Maybe next week we can get a coffee or something. I, I would use a technique like that, and and that's again something you might plan for. Right, and you're playing. So what if I get stuck with someone? Or what if I'm in a bit of an awkward situation? How can I politely excuse myself that I don't look like an idiot and I don't embarrass them or make them feel bad? So what about that? So that was my suggestion. Do you guys have any suggestions for in such a situation, Dorothy? Excuse me, lady who's in the restroom. Excuse me. Yeah, so right. Yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah, so some of these skill sets are dating skill sets, I suppose in that in that sense. Real quick. What if they're waiting around like, oh, they're coming back to the conversation. Okay, well, whether, well, who else? Who, who else has suggestions? Well, I need to give a suggestion then. Well, I don't know. I think I have to go check out someone else's stuff. I'm really interested in this other topic. And I'd love to keep this conversation going. We'll be in contact. Here's my business card. Mic drop. <laughs> Jay out. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that approach because it's sincere. It's what you're doing. So. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, so it's a, awesome. Yeah, so there's a couple more people I wanted to meet at this meeting before I have to go. I think that, that's totally cool, right? And I, th I think that's, I think if said well and said honestly, I don't think, uh, if, if that person takes offense at something like that and you were, you were, you know, totally deferential, exchange business cards, I think, <laughs> you know, maybe that's not the kind of person that's really going to be a good network uh, node in your network. Other suggestions for uh, Patrick's query? Okay. So, uh, tools in your networking quiver. One is your business card. We'll talk about that in a second when we break. But um, you guys are all going to have business cards by the end of the semester. You should always have business cards at this stage in your career. Um, not only your business cards, the business cards of other people that you're accumulating. Um, name badges are really helpful. So you want to use that maximally. So what I've noticed in some conferences, uh, they give you, so yeah, so people have different amounts of money and the, and the quality of the badges varies dramatically. 
It could be anything from a, a, a sticky patch you put on your, your chest to an incredibly thin, you know, like razor wire thing that's going to go around your neck to something that's a whole, you know, rope of a, of a you know, pirate ship mask kind of going around your neck. The key thing is you want to have that badge here, right here. It is very, very common that these guys are super long and they're like down, I don't want to be crass, but we'll say boob height, right? <laughs> and that is not good for anyone, right? Because that'll either turn you into a lecherous person potentially, or you'll think the other person is kind of being like weird and creepy, right? So the best thing to do there is have the badge right here and take it, before you put it on, put a knot in the back of the badge, right? That's going to keep it right here. That's going to do two things. One, nobody's going to be creeped out or any kind of weird weirdness. But also, your name is really easily visible, and they can see it. So when they're seeing your face with a partial glance down, they can see your name. It's going to reinforce it. Secondly, when you're entering the name on your... So some meetings will say, you're going to register for a meeting, right? And they'll say, what's your name? And blah, 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 blah. Some will actually say, how do you want your name to read on your badge? If you don't see that, you should assume that the name that you're typing in is going to be what's, which is usually what's the, how it rolls out, will be the name on your badge. So make sure that if, if I know some of you guys like, have, like to have nicknames or whatever, make sure that's the name that you enter. So that's what people are associate. That's uh, the name people are associating with you. Um, uh, as we talked about for our poster, when we get to there, which we'll be talking about right after uh, spring break. Um, Printouts of your poster, eight and a half, you know, eight and a half by eleven, re regular size printouts. Awesome, have those. So you can give out a business card. That's a great way. Another way is boom. And by the way, here's my research, right? So people can look at that. And another another reinforcement that you have thought about this. Two, you've done good work. And three, this is someone that I might want to reach out to in the future. And even if I forget what they did, here's their poster. And Maybe I don't care about this, but this person back in my office, this is totally what she does. I'm going to be able to hand this off to, to her and, 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 again, draw that network uh, or expand that network. Um, like I said, taking notes when you finish up your meeting or your networking event, all, that also includes writing on the physical card. So you need to write on that card what the event was, the day, you know, it doesn't be maybe the day, but, you know, March 2016, uh, Islands Conference. Met this person in front of the poster session, asked about blah, 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 right? That should be on the card. Because you're going to put your cards in a drawer, and when you're, when you're thinking about someday, something's going to trigger, like, oh my god, she, oh, that lady totally talked about that to me. Who is that? Oh man. And you can go back to that and you can trigger that, right? So have, it, have the notes written on the actual card um, right there. And then, uh, when, if possible, memory hooks. So if you have a, a funky name, you know, have your little mantra about, you know, hey, I'm, I'm Sean. I'm Sean, and I have a hat on or something, right? Whatever. Now, now don't be cheesy, but, but if you have something that's hard to remember, right, a little bit of that uh, can be helpful. Dorothy? I just always say, like, the Wizard of Oz. There you go. Hey, Dorothy, like the Wizard of Oz, perfect, right? And then people think you have a small talk, right? That's perfect. That's perfect. Um, and so not only should you be giving them out for you, if, if you should try to remember them. And one of the key things, I am horrible at this, but it runs in my family. The men in my family, they don't remember. We know everybody on the planet. And like, if I see you, I'll totally remember you. But like, wait, what was your name? And so, uh, so using that yourself is really key. And one of the most useful things is to repeat that person's name in their name badge. Thanks, Hayden. That was really great. Yeah, da, da, da. and then you know, two minutes later, yeah, or if somebody comes in, hey, let me introduce you to Hayden, and you know, that kind of stuff. The more you can repeat it, that'll help. That re it really does, all the, all the studies show that truly helps. Yeah. And I'm reading somewhere that if you say the name seven times, that's how, that's how many times it there you go. There you go. Hey, 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 hey. They're like, okay, drop that dude's card. I got to go talk to someone else about networking. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. All right, good. Okay, business cards. Business cards. We'll talk about these when we break. 
We'll talk about this when we break. Um, what I found is, uh, so now I have these selections of business cards to share with you guys because um, what seems to have happened the last couple of years is everybody runs to Vistaprint or, or one or two cheap or relatively cheap options and go with it. Those options are fine, but I want to make sure you guys understand there's a whole variety of cards out there. So um, uh, just like we're trying to stand out with our scholarship, with our professionalism, your business cards are also representing you. Now, it's totally fine to have a, a straight up, traditional, old, white, plain business card. That's totally cool. If that's you, that's awesome. But there, it's, it's, more, it, it's easier than ever in our history to, with a couple clicks, make a, a different card. And if that's of interest to you, I would encourage you to avail yourselves of that. There's all kinds of different sizes and shapes. And you can have cards that speak to you, right? Printed on organic paper, embedded with native seeds that when they're done with it, they can throw it in the backyard, that embody your vision of sustainability, that embody your phrases, that embody your digital identity where people can link to your website, whatever it is. You can tailor these things in any way, shape, or form. So I'd like you guys to do that. Here's a few other examples, um, and I'll show you around. So they need not be, so here's John's is square. Uh, Nathan's from last year was more of this kind of a thin rectangular uh, version. Some of these guys are, are hard cornered, some are rounded corners. Here's a bookmark. This one's metal. This is a bottle opener. So, you know, if that's your <laughs> shtick, you can do that. Um, so uh, I'll show, we'll talk about specifics when I pull these guys out, but, but um, it, it's literally metal. <laughs> Tevin is in heaven. It's literally metal. So you can say, hey, I'm metal. Right, so, so if, for example, uh, now, now, now the metal ones are expensive, so you might not want to do that, but a great example of one was a bicycle shop, right, where they had a bicycle repair tool that they'd, that they'd cut out of their thing, right? So that is really reinforcing, in that case it was a bike shop, but right? Because, because hey, if I get stuck, I'm going to pull out my essentially multi-tool business card, right, to change my tire or whatever, and I'm going to think of that, uh, thing, right? You can make it out of bamboo, right? Because you want to be sustainable or something, right? So, so the point is, there's a million op opportunities out there, and, uh, and you can choose the size, you can choose the shape, etc. So let's talk about business cards, and we'll take a little break here, and you guys can stretch, and we, I'll pull out these cards. So um, by the fourth, right? So two weeks, two, two Mondays after spring break, uh, you guys are going to give me your two business cards. So you have to have your business cards done three weeks from now. So that's plenty of time to have things shipped with the free shipping or the $2 shipping or whatever. So you need not do anything expedited necessarily. Um, so, this was, so you're going to give me, you're going to turn in two cards. That's what's due. That's what that's, your assignment is to simply give me. And, I don't, and at this point, right, whatever you give me is cool. Uh, at a minimum, though, it has to have your name. It has to have some descriptor. If you want to talk about, you know, bachelors of environmental science resource management, if you want to say coastal manager, if you want to say, you know, sustainability coordinator, whatever you want to say is cool. But you need, you need some little descriptor on there. Uh, and then you need some contact info. At a minimum, your cell phone. At a minimum, your permanent email address. Uh, if you really love your CSUCI email address, you can obviously keep that upon graduation. You can, you can uh, uh, join the Alumni Association, you get to keep it. So if that's your path, that's totally cool. But generally speaking, I would suggest you guys to use your non-CSUCI, which is you know, maybe your Gmail or, or whatever, that is yours and is solid and, and you have control over that. Uh, and yeah, other stuff as well. I, I hope you guys are finding your online blog useful. I, I hope at least some of you guys are considering keeping it afterwards. If you are, I would have that, you, you know, a uh, title in there. Um, basically, whatever contact stuff you think you might, um, uh, ways for people to reach you. If you're on Twitter, if you're on, you know, whatever, you can, you can put that as well if you think that is useful. And if that, that mode that you're advertising is professional. Um, and then uh, at Sage, you need to bring 25 copies of your card to Sage. 
Um, now, you might want to have many more copies than that, and that's cool, but the, the minimum for our class is you're going to turn in two to me that you're not going to get back. I'm just going to put in the rotation that people can look in the future and, and see examples. Um, but then also you guys have to have 25 cards with you on your person for our end of the semester meeting. Mm -hmm.